investors don't invest in just a raw business. You know, they invest in an opportunity. They invest in what this could be. They invest in the story around it. They invest in your story. I hope that I can provide a few insights around that really, really hard job of pitching your venture and pitching your company to prospective investors. A little bit of background on Mars IAF for those who aren't completely familiar with the fund. We are a seed stage investor in that lifeline of private equity capital strategy. Uh, we are funded by the province of Ontario, but we try to act and behave just like a private institutional investor. Um, at seed stage, we go in fairly early, so after angel investment and typically in front of a Series A investor. We're active in the market. We have over 120 portfolio companies. We've put about 60 odd million dollars into the market. And one of our big ambitions is to enable and help our companies, our portfolio companies, raise follow on capital. And follow on capital, you know, the metric that we're tracking is that $525 million in follow on. So roughly 10x the capital that we've invested has, you know, been the end game for the companies that have continued their journey in scale, scaling the company. And that's a, great, that's a great metric for a seed stage investor because the job isn't usually done on that single raise. So if we can help to groom founding teams, if we can help to mentor the entrepreneurs and the CEO to sort of go up scale and raise more sophisticated, larger rounds of capital, uh, then we're doing our job, so we're, we're quite proud of that. You know, we've had a number of exits, we've had a number of deaths in the portfolio, but, but really, I think, lower than most of the statistical modeling on seed investors, so we've got a good little gig going there. Venture hacks and that, you know, sort of the, the great tips, tricks, and traps, and advisory for a bunch of entrepreneurs and the connection to the angel list and so on. Investors don't invest in just a raw business. You know, they invest in an opportunity. They invest in what this could be. They invest in the story around it. They invest in your story uh, that has brought you to a point where you say that I'm going to jump in and I'm going to do a startup, that sort of thing. And so that, that power of, of storytelling, I think, is one of the maybe the biggest sort of recommendations and takeaway that it's, you shouldn't just be a robot when you're pitching to investors and, and you make it personal. And if you're just you know, loading your pitch full of speeds and feeds and uh, machine learning and data analytics and blah, 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 that sort of thing, and you're not overlaying some element of sort of emotion and empathy and why it's important and the, you know, the customer value that you're creating and why they buy and the emotion triggers around that, that's where, that's where storytelling comes in place. So we can kind of shed all these digital tools that we have and go old fashioned back into the good old storytelling and if you sort of test yourself uh, in your sort of pitching um, deck or your pitching story that you have to that art of storytelling, I think that's, that's a pretty good technique. Here at Mars, we um, sort of a best practices consolidation of the 10 sort of key elements that are required in an effective pitch. There's no magic answer in the order of it, like here's, a, you know, here's the investment story and you know you got to talk about team after marketing and sales. No, and there's nothing to do with that sort of thing. It's more about those are the 10 key elements. Think of a Shakespearean play. Think of Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Think of the, the way that you come into the pitch and you create some kind of an interest factor, some kind of an in attention grabber. Some, something that you know, gets the investor's sort of limbic system firing up and not just their data analytics brain and not just the brain that says that'll never work and not just the brain that's trying to you know, say, well, you know, your revenue is that and your revenue needs to be that. Like, let's get, get, again, that other side of the equation going. 
And uh, so we, we spend a fair bit of time on this act one, act two, act three, these 10 essential elements. Uh, and, and that's something that you can find a lot of content, uh, both on the Mars site and, and elsewhere around that. You know, or you could, you know, just jump in, you know, I'm a technical founder here and I've done the best thing I've ever done around process mapping and flowing and I have machine learning algorithms and I can do big data analytics and, you know, this is going to revolutionize the way that, you know, companies organize their workflow and people are going to buy it and it's going to sell itself. And you know what? We don't have any competition. Nobody's doing this. Nobody can touch it. And you know what? It's, it, like, it's unbelievable how this is just going to go like the hockey stick path is ours. Like, this is it. And you could be done. And then there you've pitched the company and, and you're away. Um, I'm not sure about the success factor with that strategy. So again, I come back to, you know, what are the essential elements? How do you make it, you know, sort of an interest weave through that and, and really cover off all those pieces? Myself... Um, one of my colleagues, Scott Pelton, has what he calls the three T's to um, sort of evaluating a company when we see, you know, founders come in and pitch, and we see pitches like all the time, like several every week, that sort of thing. Um, he has the three T's, and I've sort of modified it a little bit to the four T's adding traction. Um, so usually I sit back and I, I kind of look at What's going on, and without any sort of order of operations here or any heavy weighting on one or the other, uh, the elements that are most important are team, technology, timing, and traction. So by team, usually we're looking for multidisciplined, complementary, work together, can climb the mountain together, sort of um, teams that, that not necessarily have been there and done that, but teams that you can tell are cohesive and maybe you, you get a good feeling that they're going to be able to handle speed bumps and pivots, which you know are going to come. On the technology side, we're a technology-based investor. There has to be something in your business that is the quasi-secret sauce or the differentiator or the way you compete against the Goliath. And it doesn't have to be a patent, an IP, and all that sort of thing. But there's some kind of a technology advantage that you're bringing forward. Uh, so, you know, certainly look at that. On the, the timing side, that's a tricky one. Because sometimes you can really have something, but you're too early. And then you might flip that around and say, well, if I'm too early, I'm a visionary. And I'm, you know, I'm anticipating market requirements before they're showing up, and so on and so forth. But if you're too early in the sense of, oh man, this requires regulatory change. Oh, this requires Health Canada and US FDA, this, this, and this, or something. And there's just a long period between the time that we invest and that runway of period of time where the capital's going to last and the time when you're finally going to be at market, that might be a timing risk that, that we have to think about. Or the flip side is that there's already, you know, this company that's trying to solve uh, the supply demand marketplace for uh, turning up, you know, places you can stay where it's not necessarily a hotel. Well, yeah, oh, I think there are some companies doing that. And so, you know, can you actually enter into a market that's, that's well served? And on the traction side, well, traction is traction. And it, it doesn't have to be that you have, you know, Fortune 500, Fortune 100 customers already in the check mark. It doesn't have to be that your sales are ramping like crazy. But there's some kind of a validation. Maybe it's from a strategic partner. Maybe it's from key sort of pilots with potential customers that are voting to take this for a test drive. But there's definitely some way that investors can, can test and validate and reference that there is product market fit and that sort of thing. So those are, those are my sort of four litmus tests when, uh, when we're looking at effective pitches. Effective.